winning the world for Jesus. That's our message for this morning. Winning the world uh, this ev uh, uh, evening. Winning the world for Jesus. Winning the world for Jesus. Winning the world for Jesus. I know it may be strange to so many of you because I know that you have prayer points. Some are saying, Pastor, uh, let's talk about my prayer point. Let's, let's pray about my, our needs. Let's pray. Some have financial needs, some material needs, property needs, you know, different kinds of needs. But you must understand that no matter uh, how much we need God to answer our needs, we must understand that our principal assignment on earth, hear me, is to know Jesus and to reveal him to the world. Now, if they ask you what is the principal assignment of every Christian, knowing Jesus and revealing him to the world. That is our vision. That is our purpose of being on earth. Say after me, my purpose. I didn't hear you. Say my purpose here on earth is to know Jesus and to reveal him to, my, to the world. Now, that is our major assignment, knowing Jesus, revealing him to the world. Now, if you have known him and you have not revealed him, beloved, you are not yet fulfilling the assignment. You are not yet fulfilling the mandate. And if you are revealing him and you don't know him, just like the seven sons of Skipha, they were saying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that Paul preached. They didn't know Jesus, but they were talking about Jesus. So if you, are, if you don't know him and you are revealing him to, you are not fulfilling the mandate. It must be completed. It must be complete, sorry. That's why the Bible says Jesus chose the 12 disciples that they may be with him and that he may send them forth. Let's start with our anchor, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. That's our first Bible reading for today. It says, but ye are a chosen generation. It's talking about you and me. That, but you are a chosen generation. Look at it. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. That ye should show forth. Look at this. The praise of him who hath called you out of darkness to his marvelous light. That you may show forth the praise of him that called you. So he first called you out of darkness. Brought you into light. So that you can show it, that light forth to the world. So let's say it again. My purpose on that, I didn't hear you now, is to accept Christ and reveal him to the world. Let's say it again. My purpose on earth is to accept Jesus and also to reveal him to the world. So no matter the kind of vision, let's look up, no matter the vision you have, pastor, I want to be great. I want to become a medical doctor. I want to become a, a barrister. I want to become this or that. It does not mean that you don't have vision. But no matter your vision, you must make sure that your vision is doing these two things. Making you to know the Lord and revealing him to the world. So use whatever means you have to reveal Jesus. You know, uh, our students at school, you know, I just love those uh, children. Whenever we have fellowship like that, you see that they are attentive. They want to ask questions. Uh, sir, 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 what is the meaning of social? They want, you know, they want to know the Lord. That's why every child of God must use every opportunity to reveal Jesus. And I'll show you how to do it. Let's confirm more. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Now look at this. Jesus, after resurrection, said, and he said unto them, do what? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every living being. He that, sorry, he that baptizeth, uh, sorry, believeth, and is baptized, shall what? Shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So this is, these are the two scriptures that backs up our vision. And what's our vision again? To receive Christ and to reveal him to the world. So that's our principal assignment. Put it on your heart. That wherever I am, wherever I find myself, wherever I live, wherever I pass through, I must reveal Christ. 
Whatever I pass through, I must reveal Christ. Now, let me tell you a little bit of a story that happened uh, about two weeks ago. I was at home. My wife was not around. It was a Saturday. And we agreed that I will come with the children so that we'll meet in church. So while I just wanted to throw some, uh, some trash into the waste bin, the community landlords were passing. I know it will not be proper. I didn't attend the meeting that morning. I had dropped my own contribution. So as I dropped the trash into the trash uh, 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 bucket, what happened? Okay. As I dropped the trash in the trash Praise the Lord. Thank you. And let the keyboard also work. So as I dropped the trash, so I saw them. So I came out to I greeted them. You know, while I was greeting them, they were accusing a man of God that lives close to us. They were accusing him that he doesn't contribute to what happens in the community. You know, they were accusing him of many, many things. You know, I was now trying to, I didn't say anything, I was just there. So one of the Muslim guy, guys now said, at least if we all don't have pastor for not in this community, we will believe that you, this man, your habit, is a habit of every pastor. Not supportive, very rude, very arrogant, misunderstood. You know, they said so many things in his presence that if not that Pastor Falabi is a pastor in this community, if you had been the only pastor, they said we would have hated pastors. They now said, Pastor, why not talk to him? You know, instantly in my heart, I was glad for one reason. I was glad because the unbelievers could see Christ in me. I was sad in another place, reason, uh, part of my heart. I was sad because the man being talked about or spoken against happens to be a pastor like me. Am I communicating? Hello? Listen, we all must work with this vision. Wherever you live, if, even if people won't provoke you before you get angry, the first thing you must think of is that you are a representative of Christ. Now, I don't mean that you won't stand for your right. Hello? But whatever you do, do it in such a way that you will not bring shame to the name of Jesus Christ that is upon your name. So say after me again, my vision is to know Christ and to reveal him to the world. Let's answer our next question. How are we to win the world for Jesus? How are we to win the world for Jesus? How? We want to win the world for Jesus. How are we to win the world for Jesus? Let's read two scriptures. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 1. How are we to win the world for Jesus? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1. We are also going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. Now look at this Hebrews 13, 1. It says, let brotherly love, do what? Continue. Let brotherly love continue. I'm going somewhere. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9. I want everybody to see. Please put it on screen for us to see. Now, thank you. He said, but as touching what again? Brotherly love. Let's speak together. But as touching what? Brotherly love. You, you, you need not that I write unto you. For you yourself have thought of God to do what? To love one another. Now, why are we talking about brotherly love in answering our question on how we are to win the world? Listen, to reach the world for Jesus we are supposed to maintain brotherly love so that our love life will attract more people to want to join us. Now, when we talk about winning the world, hear me, we cannot be winning the world when we make ourselves enemies to ourselves. 
I come again, we cannot be winning the world when we make ourselves enemies to ourselves. There is no how people we want to see us and say, ah, and I love this Jesus so that these people are, 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 are you know, call their Lord. We can't win the world until we'll, we, we reveal the, I wrote here, it is love among believers. Oh, sorry, I've omitted something. Now, when we say brotherly love, what is brotherly love? Brotherly love is love among believers. When we sincerely care for ourselves because of our salvation in Christ, when we refuse to allow denomination, tribe, language, color, or class divide us. Now, that's why Paul kept speaking about brotherly love. He said, let's brotherly love continue. What is the brotherly love we are talking about? When we decide, now for instance, look at every one of us seated. I can begin to mention some of you, your, where you came from. I'm from Ibadan. She's from Ado. My wife is from Ijebu. Abi, you are from where? Ibadan. You are from where? Ibad, wow, Ibadan. People are plenty in our church. You are from Kwara State. You are from Ogun State. Wow. Ondo State. Sister Bawa. Bonu State. Wow. Is that not where Bukwara is? Okay. Mommy Alimi. Togo, not state. Togo Nation. <laughs> yes, ma. Ondo State. Okay. From Ogun State. Okay. From where? Edo State. Madam. She doesn't even know her state. Anambra State. My sister, Osho State. Bro, Akwaibom State. Ijebu State. Ijebu is not yet a state. Ogun State. Okay. Have I asked, if, is anybody have not asked? You are from where, sir? Ogun State, too. Wow. Okay. Now look at what is brotherly love. Brotherly love is when we allow one thing to unify us. And what is that? Our salvation. When we are not thinking of tribe, when we are not thinking of color, when we do not allow status. Now, she's an engineer. Me, I'm a pastor. My wife is a businesswoman, so pastor. Pastor, businesswoman, sorry. You are business. Student. Student, okay? You are not a student. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, when we do not allow, you know, we don't allow anything that we, we, uh, we have become naturally to affect our relationship with each other. That's what we call brotherly love. When we are not saying, uh, well, well, I am adding, you know, I, I am my, my, based on my status, I cannot. You know, when we don't allow that, that's what Paul is saying. Let brotherly love continue. Now, listen, when brotherly love becomes strong, when we are able to love ourselves so well, we, if I, I will show you something this evening. We are able to love ourselves so well, listen, our love of, of ourselves will convince the world to want make them come join us to serve God. That's the first kind of evangelism that every Christian is supposed to practice. And I saw this evangelism in the book of Acts. Let's go there. Acts of Apostles chapter 2. I saw this evangelism in Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, 41 to 47. Acts chapter 2, from verse 41. Thank you. Then, they that gladly received his word were baptized. Look at this. And the same day were added unto them, about how many? 3,000 souls. Let's move on. We stop at 47. 3,000 souls, verse 42. Let's move on. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 43. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Yes. And all that believe were together. Can you see that word? All of them that believe were what? But this scattered, no, they were together and had all things. How? In common. 
that's the love I'm talking about. We stop at 47. Show me the next verse. In every of that thing were done in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. 46. And they continue uh, and they continuing daily with one another in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness look at that and what and singleness of heart they ate their meat with gladness and singleness of heart united verse 47 praising god and having favor with how many people all people and the lord did what let me hear you added to the church daily such as should be which means that as people saw the love in their midst as people saw the way they related with each other the bible says more people were joining the church beloved let's make up our minds except if you are not born again that as born again christians we will not allow anything to divide us we that are members of the body of christ now we will not allow denomination now when i talk about love being among the members of the body of christ it does not mean members of this church alone this church is a denomination the body of christ is large hello hello a person could be in celestia and be, and be born again it's not all celestials that are evil a person could be in catholic church and still be born again he has a one-on-one -on -one encounter with god it's not everybody that is in catholic that is not born again let's begin to break free from that denominational mentality we are not going to be saved because we are members of gospel evangelical mission we are going to be saved because we give our life to jesus christ so that was how the church started look at another example again acts of the, the same acts of the apostles chapter 2 1 to 8 the holy ghost would not have come down if these people were not anointed i mean we are not united acts chapter 2 1 to 8 and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with what one accord in one place on the day of pentecost they were all in one accord if the bible says they were all in one place would have said it's not unity they are talking about physical gathering together but in one accord means in oneness of heart verse 2 the holy ghost doesn't come upon it it divided people and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the, the the house where they were sitting it filled all the house where they were sitting next verse and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them you know if you read from the beginning you will see that they were 120 but they were united 120 but in one one accord let's not allow tribe let's not allow color let's not allow doctrine let's not allow anything separate us the more we love ourselves the more we become an envy to those outside listen brotherly love is a major source of worldwide evangelism that's where the strength for evangelism comes from this was what the believers did in their days they made a lot of people decide sorry this made a lot of people decide to join the church but what is happening today even before jesus left look at the instructions he gave we are going to see four scriptures here it started from John chapter 13, 34 and 35. Before Jesus left, let's look at the instruction he gave. John 13, 34 and 35. He instructed the disciples and instructed them strictly that please love yourselves. A new commandment I give unto you, that you what? Love one another as I have what? Loved you. That ye also love one another. He repeated it again love one another the same way i love you verse 35 he repeated this instruction several times 35 but this 
by this shall look at this by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love sorry if ye love one another then the whole world will say ah these people are my disciples now can you imagine we fighting ourselves god forbid and we are saying we are inviting people come and join gospel evangelical mission where we don't greet ourselves that's why the bible says a house that fights against itself does not need the devil to fight against it a house that fights against itself will scatter on its own so jesus said he said by this shall all men know if you think they are not watching us christians we are only joking they are watching us i know that there are so many terrible terrible people that have entered the body of i will show you when we get there but it does not remove the instruction of jesus we must walk in love love for who for the household of faith Should, let's see another one john 17 verse 23 jesus repeated the same instruction john 17 23 john 17 23 not 24 23 thank you i in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me show me 24 i think i omitted that one 24 are we slow today i'll take us to the next one john 15 12 to 17 John 15, 12 to 17. This is my commandment. Look at it again. That you do what? That you love one another as I have loved you. So let me ask you, who is your sister? Is your fellow brother in Christ? Who is your brother? Your fellow brother in Christ. Now that's how we should see ourselves. Verse, next verse. We stop at verse 17. This is my commandment. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. That the same way I've loved you, I'm showing you the way I love you. Ye, ye, ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, you become my friends when you do whatsoever I command you. Move on. We stop at 17. Ends forth. I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. That's why I'm calling you friends. Verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. Verse 17. The instruction still remains the same. And that's how we can bear fruit. We can't bear fruit if we don't love ourselves. These things I command you. That you do what again? That you love one another. So we can't win the world if we don't love ourselves. I come again. We can't win the world if we don't love ourselves. That's why we must continue to work on our long love life. Let's look at this. What is wrong with believers of today? Why is it that there is no love in church today? Why? Now, it all started in Acts chapter 6. If you go to Acts chapter 6 from verse 1, you will see that something happened. As the number of the of the people coming to church were increasing. Some set of people joined. Now, when it now got to the point of distribution of food, discrimination came in. Show me Acts chapter 6 from verse 1. Discrimination came in. The Bible says it was discovered that when they were distributing food, look at this. Acts chapter 6 verse 1, not 8. 6 1, 6 1, 6 1. Yes, and in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose, what? A murmuring 
of the Grecians against the Hebrews. That was where it started. Though. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So, you now got to a point when they want to distribute food, they will look at their faces. That was where it started from. Then there was money. But I love what the disciples did. The elders, the apostles. The Bible says they held the meeting. Let us look for certain men that will be in charge of this. We cannot allow the church to be divided. That's why I want to talk to us today. We must walk in love. Now, the number one sign that you have accepted Jesus is your, it is your love life that will show it. Because if you have obtained the love of God, it should not be difficult for you to reveal that same love of God to, to, your, fellow, uh, uh, to your neighbor. You have obtained love. It will compel you to want to show love. Now, what is love? Love is to care. That's why I'm giving every one of us a task today. As believers, let us begin to walk in. Let us begin to care. Let's begin to think beyond just ourselves. Let's begin to think beyond ourselves. Now, Jesus, it was through Apostle Paul. He got that revelation. He said at the end time, there's this revelation that there will be this strange spirit that people shall no longer be lovers of God or their neighbors, but people will be lovers of themselves. It's a sign of the end time. Don't let it possess you. There is no how we can reach the world if we continue to fight ourselves. Let's get that truth, that fact. It's not, are we not going to offend ourselves? We are going to offend ourselves. Did it not happen in the church? It happened in the early church in Acts chapter 6. But when it happened, they quickly attended to it. The disciples quickly, the, the apostles quickly attended to it. They gathered the meeting together. What do we do now? What do we do now? Let us choose men filled of the Holy Spirit. Let's choose men with wisdom. Let's choose men of decent report. Let's put them in charge of distribution of food. Make up your mind that you will walk in love. But see, you cannot walk in love if you don't do these four things I want to tell you. Number one. You cannot walk in love if you don't stop treating people the way you don't want to be treated. There won't be love. One of the things that kills love is when you offer people what you don't want to receive. That's why the Bible makes us to understand one of the things that shows, one of the uh, things that shows that we have met Christ, one of the understanding we should have as children of God is that we should not treat people the way we don't want to be treated. One of the reasons why there is no love is because people are selfish. Why are they selfish? They do things that they themselves cannot take. I know what he's doing. It is killing brotherly love. Every day it kills brotherly love. Stop thinking of yourself alone. If you ask some Christians, say, ah, I cannot do business with a fellow Christian, no. They'll say, why can't you do business with a fellow Christian? If you do have agreements with them, they will, they will not keep to their, to their part of the deal. But you see these unbelievers, they have fear of God. But you see these believers, they have what we call, they are so familiar with God. And do you know that this thing gradually is killing the love life of Christians? It has happened to me too before. Where you borrow a fellow Christian money, in fact, a minister of the gospel. We've had one thing like that before. We had this uh, contribution. I and some pastors, you know, and in agreement, we now say, okay, let's be contributing you. We collect this month. The other one, we collect the following month. When it got to my turn, one of the pastors did not pay. When it was, it is, it, when, when it was his turn, he was number one. I paid the money because he needed the money for something. But I was number two. When it was my turn, he didn't pay. They tried to talk to him. He said he doesn't have. But when it was the number third person's turn, he paid. 
I got angry. I felt bad. But I came out of it and I said to myself, anytime I hear contribution among pastors, I will not do again. Can you see? Brotherly love, dying, small, small. Hello, am I communicating? You make up your mind. Whatsoever you know, you know you cannot, uh, you will not love to harvest. You don't want people to do to you. Make up your mind that you yourself will not do it. So that love can continue. Number two. Second thing that kills brotherly love. Stop judging people based on your area of strength. I come again. Stop judging people based on your area of strength. Do you know that we all are still growing? Even me, your pastor, I am still growing. I've not gotten to the point of spirituality that I desire. Or have you gotten to your own? Do you know that every single time I read the Bible, I still see that I am still very far from Jesus. I don't know whether there's anybody here who have become so closer to Jesus in his work. Every time I read the Bible, I still see that I'm still far. You know, I've been reading Acts of the Apostles these days. And I, I got to chapter, I think it was in chapter, uh, chapters, I got to chapter 16. I saw Paul's zeal for Jesus. Chapter 17. Chapter 18. You know, he was locked up in chapter 16 for preaching the gospel. Could you go to preach more? But as they released him from prison, some believers quickly released him to go. He got to chapter 17. He started preaching again. I think it was in chapter 17. He got to Athens. The city where they believe so much in idol worshiping. He preached there again. There was another crisis. They, they locked him up. They, they were looking for him. Some believers quickly, Paul still got another town again. <laughs> no, it was in chapter 17. He got to the, Berean, the Bereans. They chased him from one city. He got to the Bereans. He finished from the Bereans, they chased him out of that city again. Every time I read, I used to tell myself, have I, have I gotten to that point of Paul? Something wants to steer me up to pray for more evangelism fire. Now, if me at your pastor, at this level, I'm still saying I'm still far, it would be wrong of me to use my strong area to judge you in your area of weakness. It kills love. Am I communicating? We are still growing. That's why when you are relating with people, you to study them, know their, their, their levels, know where they have gotten to spiritually. Don't expect too much from people so that you don't feel battered and betrayed. Brotherly love will die if you continue to judge everybody by your own area of strength. Well, uh -uh. And she calls herself born again Christian. Should she, should she talk like that? It may be that she is still growing in the aspect of knowing how to present words. Now, what's the, if I should zero this my statement, what am I talking about? Let us learn to understand and appreciate each other's level of spirituality. And let us be patient with each other so that we can grow to the point of man. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand that you cannot judge people by your own base of spirituality, uh, by your own, uh, be, uh, sorry, based on your own level of strength, you'll be patient with them. You'll be patient with them. Now, let, me, let me hold on. They are sick coming up. I know so many of you that when you just came, I knew the level where you were. So many of you have grown. Uh, there was a time when I'm talking, some of you, will be quiet, you have nothing to contribute because you didn't have the wisdom to contribute anything. But when we talk today, and so I listen to some of you make contribution, I say, wow. These people are growing old. You know, I'm glad that these people are growing. Praise the Lord. Number three, brotherly love will die if you refuse to visit and address annoying issues on time. 
brotherly love will die if you refuse to address annoying issues on time. You know, there are issues that happens among people. Okay, look at the one we read in Acts chapter 6. They saw that uh, partiality has started coming to the church. What did the elders do? Okay, let's read it. Acts chapter 6. Now let's read from verse 2. We've seen verse 1. What happened in verse 1? Look at verse 2. They didn't keep quiet. They addressed it. Look at verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for that. Verse 3. Verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look you out among seven men of honest report. Now, can you see that? They didn't leave it the issue. They addressed it. Now, if you notice anything among the brethren that you feel annoys you, irritates you, don't overlook it. If you are overlook it, it will grow. And as it is growing, hatred will be spreading. There was a time we treated one issue in church. I think it was uh, my wife that handled it. Then I was brought in. We didn't know that one of our sisters was angry. She lost her mom. She traveled to visit the mom. Now, your pastor and the leadership, there are some certain cases we have not handled before. Now, she didn't know that we have not handled cases like that. When she, I was even calling to say, how is the barrier? She said, fine. Now, she expected that at least one or two people will visit, you know, join her, or maybe she will get support in one way or the other. But we just thought that uh, it was her sister. We prayed for her over the phone. The barrier shall be successful. She came back and she was cold. But she said, when the issue it became issue after she being cold, so when my wife came into the matter, and it was not straight, it was one issue that led to it. Then she opened up. We asked, why didn't you come up to say that you were offended? She said, talk to one of the people in church, and the person said, don't talk to them or don't tell them anything. Keep it to yourself. Please, don't keep offense to yourself. It will kill brotherly love. And we face the person and instantly I say, you misled her. You will have allowed her to open up. Because if you keep issues in your heart, it will continue to escalate. You know what happens to wound when you cover it? When it doesn't have access to air? It will rot. So as she finished pouring out her mind, so I expected the church to do this and that, I apologized. On behalf of the church, we are sorry. We didn't know. We've never handled cases like this before. But we are sorry. Do you know that we learned from her issue? Now, when people now begin to have similar cases, we handle it from what we have learned from her. Am I communicating? If you want brotherly love, continue. If you feel hurt by somebody among the brethren, don't bottle it. Look for a way to express it. Let it come. In fact, don't discuss it with a third party that does not have a solution. Because if you just go and tell another person, the person may worsen it for you. Even if it is me or my, or my wife or any of the leadership that you feel, ah, I feel offended. Let me go and say, come up. So that brotherly love can continue. See, I hear. I didn't hear you. Because it is our love, our love life, that will make things to work and bring other people to Christ. If I'm to be sharing testimonies, I won't live here today. Of people who met themselves here and in one way or the other are a blessing to themselves. Praise the Lord. Number three, number four. Brotherly love will die if we allow the ministry of the gossips and the dictionary minded kind of people. They will kill brotherly love. What's a gossip? T talks that is made behind. It kills brotherly love. 
Ah, Teba Mokoton She, Teba Mokoton She. Anything they say behind that looks it sounds irritating, why not go and ask? You know, a minister called me and was telling me something. And I said, No, it's not supposed to be. Why not ask? He said, No, me, I will not ask. So I called the sources and I asked. They said, Pastor, it's not so. They said, Who told you? I said, This is the person that told me. So they, I said, Please call him and tell him I told you. So they called him. He denied. He now came to me and said, Pastor, please, I was only telling you. I don't want them to know. If you are telling me, you are making me to also want to be hot like you. Me, I will open it so that the thing can be settled. Gossip will always kill love. And don't forget, our love is important because of the vision. I'm waiting for you to take the shot. Thank you. Now, can you just imagine, maybe one of us is getting married and we all are around. I remember those days when we were young believers. My wife can testify. In the fellowship where we were raised, what do we mean fellowship in Padaskata? My pastor missed it at a point. In our fellowship, we're living like one family. You see that when one person is doing something, every other, every, everybody will gather around. In those days, we don't, need, we don't use ketras. But you know today, today's people, the people that are coming to church today are not born again. <laughs> if you want to cook food and you don't choose ketras, you choose church members, half of your food is gone. <laughs> In those days, all of them will gather. They will make more money. They will cook rice, serve it, and they will not taste of it until they are given. Because those days we had understanding that whatever is not given to you that you take is stealing. Today is wisdom. They will tell you, no, 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 no. He that works on the altar must be the first to partake from it. They will even quote it from the Bible. I'm trusting God that the church will come back to those days. Those days when you say you have a prayer point, you have like six, seven people that can fast for, they want to fast with you. You know today if you say I have a prayer point, this one will say I have two. Ah. You say you don't any prayer point, you don't need a meal. And when you say let us pray for Sister Lagbaja, you see that they are not praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for myself. <laughs> You know why? Lo brotherly love, no son. And one of the things that kill it is, is that the things I'm telling you, let's not allow any form of gossip. If anybody is saying anything about anybody to you, be willing to confront. Ask the person, should I ask him or her? If the answer is no, that person must be lying. Let brotherly love what? Continue. What do we need to do for brotherly love to continue? I'll stop with this one. Let's continue to pray for grace. That's not a proper chair. Come to where I put you. Let's continue to pray for what? Grace. Your fair, Latin man in no fair, who are you on die for me? Continue to pray for grace. I know the devil wants to do so many things to make love to irritate you, but continue to pray for grace. Paul said, Let brotherly love continue. I love what happened in Acts chapter 2. People were joining the church from far and near. Why? They were convinced by the love in the body of Christ. Let me ask you, church, will you walk in love? I told our leaders on Sunday, when we were having leadership, our fellowship, 
that God is bringing people to our church but please don't chase them away don't think that every believer will look like you some people are born again but God is still working on their dread I'm talking about some men God is still working on their dread don't chase them away from the church some men are born again but God is still working on the earrings on their ears you didn't die for them you know our ushers had an issue with one brother I came to church they were telling him to remove his cap he said he cannot remove his cap when they told me I said you would have left him now you would have left him they said one of the ushers said I will go and remove the cap from his head you cannot sit in the presence of God with your head covered as a man and I told that our uh, brother I said you are a religious Christian salvation is a personal thing if he decides to wear cap to his to God leave him see when the word of God enters the heart nobody tells anybody what to do you know why I'm teaching you this the harvest is coming let it not be that when people begin to join God begin to bring the people in. Say, ah, they get irritated by the, you know, that there's no love. Let brotherly love continue. Will you continue to walk in love? Say yes by the grace of God. Will you continue to walk in love? Don't forget, you continue to pray that God should strengthen your heart help you to continue to walk, walk in love if you think that uh, pastor you don't understand my story I have been betrayed come and ask me if me I open some of my bags to you you will love again <laughs> but God has helped my heart to heal and I've gotten to a point in my walk with God now that by his grace I will not be offended because now I know how to forgive in advance Before we take from the table tonight, I want us to pray for ourselves. Lord, I ask for grace to walk in love. Let's begin to pray. I ask for grace to walk in love, oh God. You know, you cannot walk in love if you don't know how to forgive. Lord, I ask for grace to walk in love. Lord, I ask for grace to walk in love. Lord, I ask for grace to walk in love. Lord, I ask for grace to walk in love. Father Lord, I bless this drink. 